So when we just <clears throat> so when we began our discussion about time series analysis, I mentioned that there were two basic classes of time series models. One that assumed kind of long individual time series, uh, and the other that assumed this idea of what we call repeated measures or longitudinal data. That you have the same observational unit is being measured repeatedly over time, but you have many such observational units rather than just one. And a lot of what we've worked on up to now in this series of lectures on time series analysis, there's been uh, an implicit assumption that we were dealing with individual long time series. So what I want to do today is, is to dive deeper into the concept of, of repeated measures data, which is very common in a lot of monitoring where you are measuring the same plot, the same individual, the same monitoring station, the same you know, point, uh, the same gauge, and you're monitoring that uh, over time, but you have many places that you're monitoring. Um, and so when you do that, uh, observations on the same unit over time are not independent. You just can't pool data sets that measure individuals over time and treat them uh, as independent samples. You're gonna vastly overinflate your sample size because, you know, uh, yeah, because measurements through time are not independent. And so you know, the actual, you know, effective sample size is somewhere between the number of individuals you have and then the number of individuals times years or individuals times measurements. Uh, and that if, you know, where you fall in that continuum has a lot to do with the, the autocorrelation in the data. So imagine I was interested in looking at the relationship uh, between growth and some resource. Uh, and I am, uh, you know, in, in this view, I just have access to that overall relationship uh, that emerges across the full data set. But imagine that this data set that we're looking at comes from uh, repeated measures. So I actually, you know, these points represent individuals that are tracked through time. Uh, and if I, you know, look at, you know, the trajectories of the individuals in the population, um, suddenly uh, that additional information of which individual is which uh, clearly, you know, jumps out as having a pretty large impact on this relationship between uh, growth and resource. Um, we see that there's, you know, clear differences between individuals and their growth responses, but we actually see that within an individual, there's often uh, less variability. You know, there's kind of more consistent slopes here, uh, but, you know, not every individual follows that pattern exactly. And so we need to deal with the fact that observations from individuals are, are not independent, that, that we need to account for that autocorrelation. So how can we do that? I'm going to say that we are already uh, empowered with all of the tools that we need to be able to deal with this. We just need to talk through what those different options are. So one option would be to address this repeated measurements using random effects. And the two obvious choices were to either uh, look at the random effect by time or by individual. So Random effect by time may seem like the obvious way to deal with uh, temporal autocorrelation in your data, uh, but it's worth re repeating uh, that actually a random effect on time, uh, which may actually be necessary in, in this data if there is large synchrony, but what it is assuming is that all observational units are moving up or down in sync. So it may, uh, a random time effect may be necessary in a repeated measures data set to uh, address observed synchrony in responses across units. The, the, the different units are not independent of each other. They may be moving in synchrony, uh, but it wouldn't actually solve the lack of independence within units. So a time effect doesn't address the fact that uh, the observations from an individual are autocorrelated over time. Just, you know, slightly unintuitive, but, you know, that's essentially, again, the time effect is, is one that's shared across individuals. So that's why it's, it's kind of 
helping us capture that synchronous movement across individual. Um, if we look by contrast, we could uh, put a random effect on each observational unit. And that assumes that each unit is offset from the average by some constant amount. Or if we put a you know random effect on the slope, it would you know it could assume that uh, every individual slope is slightly different uh, from the overall mean by some constant amount, depending on whether you put that random effect on the intercept on this or the slope. Uh, for this particular data set, that, that that's clearly the better choice. You know we're seeing uh, individuals that are are whose responses are different from each other and consistently different. You know, this, this uh, cyan individual in the bottom is consistently low. This black individual and green individual at top are consistently uh, higher. Um, but the actual slope between them is probably pretty similar. It's just the intercepts are very different. Alternatively, we can deal with repeated measures data uh, using an, an autoregressive model like we talked about uh, for longer time series. Um, and in the autoregressive mo mode, it assumes that each unit is similar from one time to the step, one time step to the next, uh, but isn't trying to deal with any synchrony across units. Uh, in that sense, it's very similar to uh, having a random effect on the unit. And indeed, if you have a short time series, uh, it can be almost impossible to distinguish an autoregressive model from uh, an individual effect or unit effect model. So this data set here, uh, you could imagine could have, ero of, could have arisen because of strong autocorrelation uh, you know, through time, that, such that the, you know, the error in uh, this light blue or the cyan unit is consistent over time because the errors are autocorrelated, or it could be because there's a, con a constant offset. Uh, indeed, uh, a random effect by measurement unit in this case is essentially the limit of the autoregressive model when that autoregressive parameter, that row, goes to one. So in that sense, the, the individual random effect is kind of almost a special case of the autoregressive model. That said, if you had longer time series, if you had you know, data extended over longer periods of time, uh, in that case, it can be possible to distinguish uh, uh, an autoregressive model from an individual, individual effect model because uh, in the individual effect model, those persistent, distance, distance, those persistent differences that you see at the start of the time series are going to continue to persist. So you know, if I see you know, you know, this green unit is above average early in the time series and the, the cyan unit is below average early in the time series. If I go out, you know, 20 years, I'm gonna expect green to be just as much above average and cyan to be just as much below average uh, as I did at the stop, if start. If, if that offset is consistent, then that would argue that a random effect model uh, is really the appropriate one because there might be some attributes associated with those sites that are causing those persistent differences. Uh, by contrast, if those differences uh, between observational units at the beginning change through time, some might get bigger, some might get smaller, but you can see that they're evolving over time. They're no longer just a constant offset. That might arise because there's some sort of autocorrelated error in the system and you know, what you're seeing as initial differences are, are you know, ultimately transient initial differences uh, and just the fact that we're dealing with a process that is, is correlated over time. So I guess that means when you have a short time series where you don't, where you can't figure out which is the better, it's kind of, you know, either would work, it's kind of up to which you are more comfortable with. And then if you have longer time series at uh, individual locations, you could actually test uh, the autoregressive model versus the, the unit random effect. And, you know, again, not to completely discount that time random effect, if you do, if you do look at longer time series and do see a lot of synchrony across your observational units, uh, that would argue that you do need a random time effect 
uh, to account for uh, the fact that that uh, there's synchrony, and thus uh, at a larger spatial scale, treating uh, observational uh, observational units as independent would have been inappropriate. And in fact, when we move on to our next unit on spatial models, we'll see that we'll have that exact same uh, trade-off between that uh, random effect in time and uh, spatial autocorrelation, because you might have you know, synchrony across space because uh, of spatial autocorrelation. <laughs> 